On this episode of the world's most important hip-hop podcast, a hip-hop party game where there's no right answers is a shining example of DIY entrepreneurship. Check out my talk with University of Dope's PhD of the Trap, A.V. Perkins. My name is Manny Faces. This is Hip Hop Can Save America. Let's go. The thing about hip hop uh, today is it's smart. It's insightful. The, the way that they can communicate uh, a complex message in a very short space is, is remarkable. And a lot of these kids, they're not going to be reading the New York Times. That's not how they're getting their information. So hip hop didn't invent anything, but hip hop reinvented everything. Okay, going clockwise, each player takes a card and reads it aloud. Players have 5 to 10 seconds, usually filled with emphatic outbursts of opinion that would make Stephen A. Smith seem subdued, to place a card down, denoting their answer to the multiple choice question. When all players have answered, the cards are flipped. The winner? Majority rules. The loser? Drink up. It's a hip-hop party game, but it ain't trivia. Everyone thinks they have the right answer, but there are no right answers. It's the barbershop slash lunchroom slash nail salon type of hip-hop discussions we've been having all of our lives. But instead of wildly lashing out on message boards, social media, or clubhouse, here, you're with friends. And here, you also might get drunk. Now, A.V. Perkins is the co-founder and chief promoter of University of Dope, the card game and its various on- and offline counterpart events. A.V., also a well-established do-it-yourself advocate who's had stints on HGTV, has watched her entrepreneurial baby grow, survive a pandemic, and just recently hit the shelves of none other than bullseye box store behemoth Target. It sounds like a lot, but once you know AV, you know that it's likely only the beginning. Now, before we get to it, remember, you can get a ton of inspiring and innovative hip-hop news and views via my free newsletter at mannyfaces.substack.com. You can support this show and the newsletter so that we can remain independent and unbothered by the need that others have to dumb down the culture. Visit patreon.com slash mannyfaces to help support. And stick around until the end for a chance to win your very own University of Dope game. Now, here's my conversation with A.V. Perkins. A.V. Perkins does what? Does, does everything. <laughs> What's up, my friend? I'm so glad we finally got the chance to uh, to get this uh, get this done. How are you? I am doing great. How are you? I'm all right. Unobligatory, but heartfelt Happy New Year. It's still the top of the year. So we're uh, ask depending on who you ask him. <laughs> yeah. T- today we're recording this today. It's technically like ditch your New Year's resolutions day. Is that the thing? <laughs> I don't know, but it could be because it's the 17th. Like after Martin Luther King Day, if your dream has not been actualized, <laughs> it's it's gone. He had a dream for all of us. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Uh, so, um, and we know each other for a long time. I, I, you know, we have a bunch of mutual friends. Uh, I don't think I've seen you in person. I don't think we've ever met. Yes, I. Agree. I think maybe one time. It this it just might ring a bell. Freestyle Mondays. We might have crossed paths. We ever had a Freestyle Was it Mondays that event. Freestyle Mondays with with Corey. Cause I only mm-hmm. went to one Freestyle Monday. You were manning the 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 camera. No, I wasn't true? working at all. Anything, okay, anything you were there. Else, I went there as a civilian. Maybe I met you at the camera. But regardless, I think that's where we once yeah. crossed paths. And I, I then said, who's that? And then found out that you were everything because you do everything yeah. and you're doing all these things. <laughs> so let's start with, uh, for the folks that don't know who you are and haven't crossed paths. And shouts to Corey Illspoken, uh, FKA yeah. Illspoken and the whole Freestyle Mondays uh, movement. Uh, I've had him on the show. He's been he's been rocking with me in the past. Um, let's start at the now and why we're here talking. Um, obviously, a, uh, a renaissance uh, person like yourself wears many hats, done many things. Yeah. Uh, but let's talk. It's right here on the shelf. My University of Dope card game. Uh, let's talk about that. This uh, this uh, <laughs> this endeavor of yours uh, has recently reached a wildly high milestone. Please tell the people what we're celebrating right now. We are celebrating that we are in Target. Target. The Target. 
Yeah, they nationwide. Target nationwide. Yes, that Amazing. is definitely a, a heavy milestone that we are under right now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so it's an interesting time. I'm sure it's gotten a lot busier recently. This was recently. This happened right at the end of the last year, correct? Correct. The end of 2022, yeah. we thought our our launch day was initially going to be the 8th of January 2023. Mm-hmm. But, you know, life be life in and it came out a little bit earlier, like for like Christmas and stuff. So that was really that was a surprise mm-hmm. to us. Like, you know, people yeah. were who were across the country, like, yo, I saw your stuff in the, in the on the shelves. And I was like, wait a minute, right. it was going to be January. But it was like, yeah, you know, <laughs> surprise, yeah. surprise. Oh, that's a good surprise, I guess. How, how um, So first of all, again, to the folks who don't know, uh, I gave a little uh, you know, preamble to let them know what, what University of Dope is. Uh, but explain how you explain it to folks and, and kind of what it's about. Well, University of Dope is a disrespectful party game for hip hop lovers it is not trivia it is majority rules so mm-hmm. if i ask you and everyone else at home to um hmm, i usually give this card but i'm gonna give something different okay. if you were to choose who's winning in a jailhouse brawl <laughs> remy ma <laughs> young and may foxy brown or the brat who would you choose Oof. That's a good one. Uh, I mean, Remy's an OG, but, you know, she might have softened up over the past few years. You know what I mean? Awesome. Young M.A., you know, you don't want to say it, but, like, looks the part. <laughs> might be able to rock out. You know what I mean? He's but you might have some surprises. Anybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everyone's going to have their own opinion. Yeah. I guess yeah. you. So, yeah. whoever is in these the... Are, these are the barbershop debates. These are, these are the talks very that come much, up in the... Very much. Yeah. And I have, like, hella brothers, so that makes sense. So, these are definitely... <laughs> the barbershop type of debates. And yeah. if you chose Remy Ma and I chose Remy Ma and other people at home chose Young and Me, they, we might have lost that round if we were not in the majority. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. So that is how it goes. And then we have pop quiz questions and it can say something like, do your best DMX impersonation or two people have a chicken head dance battle or Harlem shake battle and you choose who wins. So it's, it it goes like that. Yeah. That's how our game goes. I love it. Where did this idea come from? How was it conceived and what was its uh, birth uh, like? Well, me and my business partner, Marion, shout out to skinny B. We went to college together, but we did not invent this in college. She would come visit me in Brooklyn post-college and we went to go eat. And it's like one restaurant we would always go to during that time. And I asked her if she can name all the members of Wu-Tang. Literally, that is how the game started. And she's like, yeah, I can name all the members of Wu-Tang. I didn't believe her, but I was like, okay, can you name them all if you have been, you know, drinking a little something, something, you know, it's a lot of them. Right. If you had any killer bees and everybody else, right. you know, and everybody is one degree of separation from somebody who might have been who thought they were in Wu-Tang, right? Right, right. So, yeah. But we thought it would be a great game. And yeah. we Googled Wu-Tang drinking game because, it, you know, we figured it had to exist. Like, RZA just be out here doing all of the things, right? Sure. Do- right. This is before the documentary came out. So it was just, like, so much. And it didn't exist. So we made it up. <laughs> well, <laughs> so that's, that's what they say, you know. Started, yeah. Find, find, make the thing that you want if it doesn't exist already. You would think that yeah, Wu Tang with the underwear, the, un, the underwear, the Crocs, they got everything. They would have had a you know a, a game. All of it. <laughs> right. We literally. I like the idea. A, I like the idea. It's a drinking game. It's actually kind of fun for that. Um, yeah. So how did it turn from kind of this idea? And again, this what I think this, and I want to know about your whole road here. But it is such a visible right now out in everyone's face success story in entrepreneurship you know um com- you know coming from an idea that and how long ago was this when when did this, this dinner this part this ago. dinner six how many years. six oh, okay so what was the bro what was the path to here the short version of it you know like how did you get did you make it up like yourselves on pieces of paper did you yeah, like not, well not pieces of paper but like a like a spreadsheet right mm-hmm we were coming up with the questions and we were like, you know, we want it to be punchy. And, you know, those of you who follow me on social media, I can be 
a little bit troll-like, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> so we wanted to keep that essence because it's the same conversations you have amongst your friends at the barbershop, at the nail salon, of, you know, your family, you kicking back. So, you know, when you're with your family, you're not holding no, like, there's no holds barred, right? right? So you're really just giving it like, oh, well, Jay-Z and Ethan, and, you know, all of that stuff. So right. you kind of like, right. oh, we wanted people to have that same feeling. We wanted people to have that feeling of their sophomore year in college or wherever you were when T-Pain's buy you a drink drop. <laughs> I just feel like that was a different time. Like, there, I don't think there was any wars going on. <laughs> All the children that were left behind were left behind. Like, it was just a real right. neutral place in our country. <laughs> right. So we wanted people to, to have that feeling again of just the nostalgia, the fun, the reminiscence of it all. So with that, we, you know, we created our questions to have like a certain voice to it, right? Because yeah. we definitely wanted to separate ourselves from people who did trivia. Because trivia, mm. if you know the answer, you know the answer. And right. it only goes so far. But hip hop heads tend to lose our game because right. they think their opinions are facts. Mm. You have to just mm-hmm. read the room. So that is kind of like how That's it goes funny. and that that building of of that. It's, yeah. it's actually it's it's, actually, it's interesting that you you take the argument like sometimes I, you know I'll, I'll be on Clubhouse sometimes and I, I'm like six months later y'all still having the same like you haven't done anything which what are you doing something with your life are you are you doing something to help the culture go for or are we just having these arguments over and over and over again but you've no, actually no, made it so that <laughs> yeah well I'm sure but but you've done something that actually takes that and does something with it like you could have a you know this uh, a debate on on clubhouse or on you know even on Twitter or some some social media platform but you're doing it in a room with your friends and your family and you're giving some you know a bunch of people this bonding moment that is different than just having wild arguments on the internet exactly and then with it being a formulated game like there's like right. an end a start and an end of how long you can talk about this because people you know i was born in 1985 and most of the team was born in 1985 so you know you carry the one people have been <laughs> talking about jay-z versus Nas since it happened okay right. and i was in high school when it happened right. i have graduated high school graduated college and post 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 post, post all of those things <laughs> and mm-hmm. people are still talking about it Eat the versus takeover, right? right. But we just packaged it up because it's like we have already been having this com- these conversations. Right. Let's have them yeah. again. <laughs> right, 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 and, yeah. and 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 win the game. <laughs> and win, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, ether or takeover? Who? Um, okay, see. <laughs> I'm, gonna go with, no, I'm gonna go with ether just because yeah. ether became a verb. Like I've said when, that. I've said yeah. that exact same thing. The, the cultural impact. Becomes, exactly. If something becomes yeah. a part of the lexicon of yeah. the language. Yeah. Like That's Ether big. and like an yeah. iPod. Like remember when like MP3 <laughs> players came out and everyone just called it iPods? It didn't matter right. who made them. It could be Sony, right. but you put an iPod. Same thing 100%. with Ether. Same thing with Stan. Stan? Yes. So many people That's don't why, know yeah. where Stan came from. I mean, of course. I'm like, come on now. Right, but, but it's like that's don't. that's the impact you can hate. Um, first of all, it's a brilliant song, and I don't care if you hate. It's a, actually a brilliant. And you can hate on Eminem, it, but once, right, but once that's the impactful. Become impactful like that. It's like Damn. Xerox copies, right? Right. Like right. Xerox is the brand, yeah. but no one. Right. <laughs> uh, old people Either. pass me a pass me a Kleenex. Exactly, Kleenex. Right. So Kleenex, <laughs> Xerox, Ether. Right there, right. nobody's saying takeover. So All right. It's well, we we are the majority. We rule, so that's the answer. How? Because we're right here. Everyone, uh, if you chose, to <laughs> I, I, I should have. I should. And no, then I like normally... super ugly. What was even that? I... Come on. <laughs> come on. Funny. Come on. It's You're funny. playing in our it's face. Funny. That's funny. Uh, what was your sort of connection to hip hop music and culture? You know, growing up, or you know, I just uh, you know, what was your? How do you describe your connection to the culture? How does My it connection... inform your identity? Okay, well, my connection to the culture, um, you know, when I was a kid, I liked rock music, right? Like, I was a Guns N' Roses fan and stuff like that. But my brother literally hazed me into liking hip <laughs> So, you know, see that. taking yeah. childhood trauma and <laughs> making it to, wow. into something else, right? So, um, yeah. but yeah, I also have, like, 
family who have always been like interested in like hip hop and you know contributing to the culture in different ways so that was there as well but yeah yeah it's definitely my brother literally hazing me into learning the lyrics of songs and then yeah. also having like battle competitions with like kids in my seventh grade sixth grade seventh grade class with battling with other people's lyrics which doesn't sound like a battle at all but <laughs> yeah you know that's it's part of it was like hey it's a delivery you know, battle yeah but i know all yeah. the lyrics i'm gonna show you them you know so that's kind of right. like how so yeah that's how i that's... really got into it well, it, it's paid off, I guess. Bullying. Bullying. Bullying, <laughs> bullying pays off sometimes. No, that's bullying not right. Bullying pays you. off. When you <laughs> when you decide not to, like, <laughs> ruin but, everyone's day. <laughs> but, but that's the thing. Again, you took you take the trauma. You take make something good out of it. You take the arguments and, the, and, the, and you make something out the, of it. And isn't that the essence of hip hop anyway, right? Well, I want that's funny you say that because you, you have this, this, this history, this background as a DIY – uh, expert, that's your kind of ethos, right? Do it yourself, mm-hmm. make it happen, find, you know, make a dollar out of 15 cents, you know, which is all hip hop, you know, at its core. Yeah. Went from and negative done... to positive and it's all good, right? A hundred percent. So, you so know, I, now you know. But now you know. <laughs> and I've seen some of your DIY stuff, some of the other stuff you've done, not just people who don't, you know, who know you from University of Dope or some of the you know, more recent stuff, but, you know, th- over the past few years, you, you've been on TV, you've done all these. I saw you on the uh, the flea market thing I saw. Flea market flip, yeah. That right? I didn't, even, I didn't even know that was a show until I, I was looking you up. I was like, oh, this is cool, because I do the same thing. Show. Like, I, I, I got old, ra- I got, I'm, I'm going to tell them I, st- I got old radios, like the old radio things. Uh-huh. And I'm going to, I'm trying to learn how to like sand down the wood and flip them and make them nice again. So yeah. I was really inspired I, by that. Restorations are um, yeah. like awesome. How did you get into all this like crafting and, and becoming kind of a, an, in, an innovator and an, in, uh, an, an inspiration for others? Well, in terms of crafting, I, my background is in film and television. I worked okay. doing props and set decorating for about 10 years. Okay. And so that started from college. And I like to work with my hands. I learned it from my pops. He worked in construction. So that's kind of where the tinkering and stuff came in. So that is really mm. where that kind of like, that's how I got into it. And yeah. unfortunately, he passed away. And I was like, okay, I'm going to start a blog just to kind of like figure out my life. Because my life was in shambles. Him and I were close. So I started AB Does What? And it was DIY, and then eventually I caught the attention of other p- people like HGTV to do mm. flea market flip. And then after I did that, you know, spoiler alert, we won our episode. So make sure you check it out. You know, it's called <laughs> Bring on the Bling. I forgot what season it is, like season 13. But if you type in 13, episode two. Pow. Thank you. I just, I just watched it. I didn't see yeah. the end, though. So now you spoiled yeah. it, but it's good. <laughs> so yeah, that was that was yeah. our episode, and we won. Bling on! I loved Bling it. On. By the way, I loved what you did. Uh, like, believe me, that in in the faces household, that would be a hundred percent our vibe. So I love it. Nicely done. Yeah, I love it. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. So from there, you know, um, I was like, okay, I want to kind of like keep this going in terms of being on TV and hosting and stuff like that, because I was just really just doing my own YouTube videos and stuff like that. And then opportunity came up to be a digital host for HGTV handmade, which is their digital platform on Mm. YouTube. So I did that for about like two and a half years. So yeah, you know, putting yourself out there, your wants and needs and it came to be. (laughs) And manifesting them. And this was all, this was all pre pandemic. How did pandemic kind of, well, uh, it was, it was or... going into the pandemic. I was literally in conversations with them about hosting. Well, actually, it was it started off with a um, they were going to do a home tour right before pandemic. And, mm-hmm. you know, things with quarantine started up. And I did one um, episode like at my house right before everything shut down. And then they brought me on the team after that. And like I said, I did that for like two and a half years after, oh, okay. so like during quarantine and beyond. Yeah. So that kind of worked out. That pivot actually helped yeah, out. Yeah. And, I, and I knew how to film from home. So it right. wasn't as, you know, daunting for, you know, the production staff. Got it. Got it. What, um, simultaneously trying to grow University of Dope at the same time? Simultaneously, because we also, right. we reached, um, 
So things with like crafting during quarantine, things with crafting kind of like took off because everyone wanted to craft at home. Right. With University of Dope, we had supply it's- chain issues, right? Because mm. you know our our car, like our manufacturers overseas, people are mm. having all of those things. People want to play, mm. and like a lot of people were home, but we needed to get our cards to them and. Ways we were selling before wouldn't necessarily work during that time. Like we were doing in-person game nights and kind of like selling out in the wild, right? Mm. But that wasn't working because nobody was outside. Like no one's going to go to a bar, no one's going to go to a club or any lounge or anything like that. So what we created was the University of Dope game show. And Mm. that, it was a virtual game show at first. And that opened up an entire new thing for us. We started, you know, instead of people playing with, cards they would play with their smartphone and they can we were streaming on our like youtube and our facebook channels and people can vote in real time and then we started booking events for you know people like time magazine uh sony you know everyone quarantine was one of those times where you needed to do what you needed to do during that time and Right. If you didn't hit that gold rush, I am like sorry to that man, you know, because I don't right. know, you know, that's just right. kind of what it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that pivot and that you know, kind of on the fly, freestyling it. Very, you, know I mean? you had to be very agile. Like even yeah. though the world is burning and everything is crazy, like you had to be really, really focused during quarantine. And for me, when quarantine hit, it was very much like. I had already came out like a crazy bout of like depression, right? So, you know, it's like you seen the sun, the sunrise, and then everyone's like, "Oh my god, the the world is burning!" And I'm like, "Absolutely not, not today." <laughs> for right. maybe for you it is, but That's for me, I am here, and it's gonna. I'm gonna make this work. So, um, yeah. that is how it. Um, I would say to myself, like a mantra of mine was, "I have." everything i want to do everything i need and vice versa i have mm-hmm. everything i need to do everything i want mm. you know because like i yeah. said things were going crazy but being uh, an influencer content creator i have a phone i have wi-fi and thankfully you know i was able to pay those bills for it and i'm gonna not just sulk i'm gonna just make mm. it happen every single day I'm, something's gotta pop and it did on both ends actually so yeah 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 no there's something to be said for you know uh a downtime is often the times when opportunities present themselves mm-hmm. a lot of people get rich during on down times you know just it's how you how you work it and how you flip it uh how, how you flip it right you, yeah. <laughs> you've been flipping things that's how you flip flip everything you it. <laughs> right um so going back to the game and I think why it's so successful and uh, and uh and obviously now picked up in Target and you're going to have some some even you know even more success stories with mm-hmm. it. Uh it's basis in community, it's basis in culture, it's basis in hip hop, the vibe of the game itself. Um you know, this show is called Hip Hop Can Save America, and it's a it's a lofty goal, and we need a little bit more than just hip hop to save America. But I started it because, as, as you know, probably from the things that I do and talk about, that I really believe that some of the best bits of humanity are found in hip hop culture and, and those associated with it. So how does this game? It's a game. Eh, it's just a game. But how does it kind of resonate with all the good things about human beings? Well, it for me and our customers and people like like people report back, right? Because everyone's experience is going to be different. Yeah. What I've recognized is that folks use it as a way to connect with their peers. They also use it as a way to connect intergenerationally, right? Mm. Much to our dismay, right? <laughs> People right. will say like, hey, you know, I play this with my, our kids and this is like, you know, y'all know it's a drinking game, right? Y'all Like, y'all know two <laughs> shorts in the game, right? right? Like, I don't play with my nieces and nephews. <laughs> but right. what you choose to do is what you do. But my nieces and nephews do know what it is, right? Yeah. So there's still a learning aspect there. Like, okay, auntie is doing this and, you know, as they get older, we can talk more about like the cards, Right. Um, the, the ones that are appropriate. So it's just yeah. a way to to connect 
right? And then especially in this time for folks who, you know, it's the 50th anniversary of hip hop and me being born like in 85, I am born into hip hop. So I don't know life before the genre existed, but there's people that I know and love who know what life was before the genre existed. So you can see the differences, right? Because yeah. Gen X's experience is going to be completely different. I'm a millennial right. than, than my own. So it's still right. room for intergen- intergenerational communication. And as the, the genre continues to grow, right, we are facing collectively, because all of us who've added to the genre, you know, what things that you've done, things that I've done, it's what happens now. Right? right, because it's you know starting from the streets of the Bronx where I'm from. It's you want to grow, but you don't want to lose what we have, right. you know. So things like gentrification comes into play, and all of these social economic things. And then yeah. we have we can't be ignorant to things that are happening now in terms of violence, right? So it's like where do we go? And us as elders. <laughs> you know, it's all of these conversations yeah. that can be had. Or you can just say, hey, I'm having fun with this game and we going to drink it. We're going to have fun and go to sleep. So it's either right. way you want to go. You know what I mean? Right. So yeah. um, it's both. It, it adds to both. That's pretty dope. That's a, it's pretty dope. Ah, Thank you. It's a pretty dope, pretty dope university. Yeah, pun yes. intended. Puns are always <laughs> intended with me. Uh, it is, you know, we, and, you know, in hip hop, we often, if you list the top X amount of things that are wrong with hip hop, this might be one of your cards. Um, but the intergenerational divide, right, mm-hmm. is actually one of them. Like, you know, old heads, you know, young heads, we don't like their music, they don't like our stuff. And, uh, and this is a way for actually everyone to be in the same room and maybe give some opinions, throw some content back and forth that might let the other person say, oh, you really do know or respect or have some yeah. love for or are involved in, but maybe in a way I didn't expect or see previously. And, and the thing is, older generation also has to understand, like, hip hop is still a younger genre, right? So when you yeah. think of, let's say, rock, right? And, you know, yeah. the the origins of rock and Going from, let's say, um, let's say, I mean, it's older than that, but I'm just thinking in my head, like Little Richard, right? Like right. that. Little Richard and Metallica are <laughs> right. 15 different things going on. You know, Chuck right. Berry and right. Blink-182 are different. <laughs> right. Guns right. and Roses and, right. you know, Blink are, are, are different. Right. So we as, at, like, so within, even within hip hop and black and people of color created it we still have to let it have its room to grow now yeah. room to grow doesn't necessarily mean um changing it or gentrifying it or anything like that mm. but there are going to be kids who have different influences right, right. so right. easy even if you think within hip-hop like uzi vert he has some you know some rock influences Right. And and not even like Chuck Berry rock, but right, right. Kevin Roses and Marilyn Manson rock influences with within him because he's at a certain age. And you got to think about what was going on at the time. Right. Because like TRL was more accessible. Mm. So right. all of those of things. And, and then, you know, he he was a kid when Jay-Z and uh, Linkin Park did their collabo. So it's it's just going to be right. different type of influences. So we have mm-hmm. to allow, like, hey, Uzi Vert and Rakim are not going to be the same because they didn't live the same right. life. Like, could right. you not re- like, realize that they're different? Right. <laughs> and, right. understand and that that's okay. That. And it's okay. You know what I mean? Because if you want Rakim to make more music, support Rakim so he can make more music. <laughs> right. Music that you right. like. And understand that right. even within the music that you like from him, it still has to be different because he has, he was in his twenties, right. teens when he started. Right. So if you want him to be still talking about, you know, know the ledge at fifty <laughs> something, right. it may not right. be it. You know, right? So, yeah. Right. I mean, this this was the. I mean, this was the the 
I guess, negative feedback to, you know, Jay-Z being almost 50 and still spitting like drug selling bars. And people were like, come on, bro. Like, you know, like we'd like to see a little bit more of a of a of a evolution from you in that regard as well. You know what? It's I I agree, but I also find like it's a catch 22, right? Because yep. when you talk, talk about your formative years, even as because even in our game, in the beginning of this interview, what did I say? I said where you were when you were a sophomore in college or were T-Pain right. buy you a drink drop. So yep. that's already, what, this is 2023? I'm talking 06. Yep. Right. So right. I'm a part of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> and well, it's yeah. like so much, it's like AV, so much of your life has changed from 06. Like you didn't have this game in 06, but right. you created the game and you still wanted that nostalgia. So yeah, a lot of, our favorite rappers, not even a lot of, all of our favorite rappers have been richer longer than they've been poorer. Yeah. Right? Mm, but yeah. they were poorer in their formative, formative years. years. They were You're right. poorer in their prime, in their, yeah. you know, you're young and ripping and running the streets. So while I'm talking about T-Pain, because that's just my <laughs> memories, they right. talk about slinging drugs. I didn't sell drugs. So <laughs> that's not my now, memory. Now, now I see why you made a drinking game. So and that's uh, what I was doing, man. I was, <laughs> I was drinking and dancing the tea paint. <laughs> I feel you. That's what, that's what I'm saying. You, you, you know. Uh, well, listen, your your effervescence and your formative years shine all through this project and through yes. everything that you do. Uh, and what it does is, I just love it. It brings up the opportunity to have these conversa these conversations without being emotional and, you know, so my team and your team and, you know, your rapper sucks and your generation sucks. And it's just like, like politics is, it's whatever. Mm -hmm. We should be more nuanced with our hip hop conversations. We should be each one teach one throughout the course of our, our lives to try to, you know, get these viewpoints out to people that, you know, may only be stuck on social media and not having these nuanced, intelligent conversations. And especially we want it to last. Yeah, right? because 100%. unfortunately, and then you know, with everything, everything is social economic, right? So it's like you can look at the yeah. genre, but you could also look at what was going on in the country at that time. And unfortunately, a lot of folks who are Gen X are hitting that mortality crunch, right? Mm. How many of our iconic rappers yeah. have passed within the last five years? Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Not barely reaching. 55 barely reaching 50 definitely not reaching 60 you know what i mean yeah so yeah. that's another thing as well so we do have to nurture the younger generations however way we see fit right um yeah. so the genre can actually last yeah yeah i agree 100 percent uh, yep. This is one one great way to do it and a fun way at that. Yes. Uh, what is next for University of Dope besides Target? I assume more big box stores uh, yes. would be great. That would definitely be great. That is definitely in the works. We want to have more events. We. I was going to say, you just you did some live, big live events. Explain yes. a live event, a live version of this real quick for people. Yes. I've seen it, not in person, but I've seen it and I've seen it. So what does it look like? So, like I mentioned earlier, we did, you know, in quarantine, we started our virtual game show. So when the world opened up again, we yeah. created You Dope Live, which is a live version of the virtual game show. So me, as your host, we have contestants on the stage or the front of the room, depending on where we, where we are. And instead of voting with choice cards, A, B, C, or D, they vote yeah. with their smartphone. And they can vote and there's like live polling. So think bar trivia meets like hip hop and it's a lit time. So people yeah. can see the the votes in real time. People can see how people choose in, in real time and everyone is yeah. just like having a great time. Like it's like it's lit. So yeah, that's yeah. that's what we've been doing. We had a party to celebrate our target drop recently in Connecticut, in West Hartford, Connecticut. And our plan for 2023 is more events because this is the 50th anniversary of hip hop. So we are with all of the shenanigans, you know, yes. whatever you're trying to do, we are with it. Like, get us lit. Like, we here, we here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
I highly recommend it myself uh, as someone who is also out and about doing 50, uh, you know, hip hop 50 type things, mm -hmm. uh, speaking and presentations that can be great, but yes. we need to have fun at night too, you know, in the spot and, uh, and get a jump That's in. It. Uh, so where do people find out more and, and keep track of the events? Uh, you know, uh, do, are they going to be around the nation? Are you kind of sticking in the New York we, area first? We are, work? We or whoever, have, whoever books you. We are have unpopular opinions. will travel. So we are <laughs> yeah. out here, you know, that's what's up. The wheels Very on the cool. bus go round and round. <laughs> I hear you. Uh, we are, so, so follow us on Instagram. Okay. Sure. We'll say it again. Instagram university of dope. That's the best way to see our updates. Um, university of dope.com. Make sure you get a deck. You can go to target.com or your local target. You can, you know, get yours. Tell a friend, tell a friend, don't cop one cop two. <laughs> You know? Yeah. So, that's what's up. Yeah. They make a great cool. gift any time of year, not just Christmas. All of any time of year. We also have an yeah. R and B version. So All right. yeah, it's the same unpopular opinions, but in soprano, <laughs> falsetto. <laughs> you can get yours as well. Um and but that currently is exclusively at universityofdope.com. Very, very you can get merch. And la you know, and lastly, yeah, I, I should rock some merch. I'm gonna get some merch. Get your, get you can send me some merch. I'm gonna get some merch. I support. You see, I support. Some shirt, um, some shirt. that's what's up. That's right. This was not a gift, by the way. I put my money on it. So appreciate you. Um, no, come on. That's how I do. So listen. Um, that's what's next for University of Dope. I suspect. I don't know. I'm just guessing. This might not be the only thing you're gonna do. Uh, now or in the future. Uh, you got anything else? in your wheelhouse that you want people to know about, or is this I kind of mean, the focus right now? Just, this is big time now. So you might kind of be focused, but I I'm mean, it's follow me. A V does what a V D O E S W H A T. That's where my, you know, most recent updates will be of whatever I have going on, you know, All right. we out here. I'm sure. I'm sure there'll <laughs> be some stuff going on. Of course. All the time. Yeah. All right, very cool. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure to like finally kind of dig in and get to know you and 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 know this path and how you got here. And uh, it's quite inspirational uh, to me, and I'm sure to many many others. And I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks again to University of Dope's PhD at a Trap, A. V. Perkins. To keep tabs on her movement, follow A. V. Does What on Instagram. To follow University of Dope. University of Dope on Instagram. You want to keep tabs on me? That's cool. Follow Manny Faces Official on IG or visit mannyfaces.com. That's where you'll find out more about what I speak about, my upcoming calendar, and much more. Now, before we go, as promised, a chance to win your very own University of Dope card game. A random member of the majority for this question will win. Send your answers to hiphopcansaveamerica at gmail.com. Here's the question. If someone wanted to experience hip hop for the first time, what album would you give them? A, The Low End Theory, A Tribe Called Quest. B, Enter the Wu-Tang, 36 Chambers, The Wu-Tang Clan. C, Straight Outta Compton by N.W.A. Or D, Paid in Full by Eric B. and Rakim. Again, no right answer, but send yours to hiphopcansaveamerica at gmail.com. Also, make sure you're following Hip Hop Can Save America on your favorite audio or podcast app. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pocket Casts, we're everywhere. And if you prefer the visuals, please smash that subscribe button at youtube.com slash Manny Faces. And if you like this kind of stuff, you're really going to dig my free newsletter filled with stories like this hip hop fueled innovation and insight, plus all kinds of upcoming events, an editorial here and there, a manifesto, if you will. That's, again, free at mannyfaces.substack.com. Send us your comments to hiphopcansaveamerica at gmail.com. And if you feel so inclined, please support the show and the newsletter, allowing them to both stay fully independent and unbeholden to any corporate interests the way hip-hop should be by going to patreon.com slash mannyfaces. Current patrons, stay tuned. We've got some love coming your way real soon. And I am Manny Faces, and I'm honored to have your attention. I'll continue to do my best to continue earning it. Thank you once again to our brilliant associate producer, Summer. Check out her amazing initiatives, Hip Hop Hacks, and the Mixtape Museum. Until next time, peace and love.